Hey there, Miranda Wilson here with another lesson idea to go along with our adapted articles. Our goal is to highlight and explain some of the additional resources we've curated to help with your lesson planning. Today, we'll focus on the article titled, Why Do Sharks Sleep? Michael Kelly and his colleagues examine the metabolic activity of draught spored sharks in the lab. The sharks are nocturnal and their metabolic rates were similar at night, whether they were swimming or resting, but their metabolic rates dropped when sharks were asleep. This means that sleeping is probably a way for organisms to conserve energy. This study can help scientists understand the evolution of sleep much better. This article actually has two reading levels that are available. We have a lower level version available for elementary school students, and an upper level version available for middle school and high school students. We know that sometimes students can find reading articles, even adopted ones, a bit tedious. So we've curated links to some additional resources that could round out your lesson plans with experiments and hands-on activities. The first resource we'd recommend is a group of activities from Kids Health in the Classroom, and is meant for grades three through five. Activities include keeping a sleep log, and examining different sleep habits. There are extension activities like graphing the amount of sleep students get and writing a creative story about a child who can't sleep. There's even a simple quiz to test student knowledge about sleep. This is a great way to introduce the importance of sleep to younger students. The next activity we've found is a great simulation and worksheet from Biology Corner, looking at a classic example of evolution, the peppered moths. This is meant for middle school students who will love acting like birds and eating moths of different colors. This is a great introduction to natural selection that has students take real data based on their actions during the simulation. Just make sure that your students aren't trying to cheat by purposely targeting the moths that blend in. Your students will need computer access to run the simulation and generate class data, or you could run the simulation as a demo. Also, if you're doing this activity during class and your students have computer access, be kind to yourself and have your students mute their computers or put on headphones while they run the simulation. Those birds make some pesky noises. The next resource we'd like to highlight is an interactive heart rate and breathing lab from Rockland Unified School District in California. This is designed for middle school students, but could be adapted for elementary age kids if you can trust them to count their breaths. There are lots of versions of this activity around the internet. Some of them use instruments to take data, but this one is nice because all the kids have to do is measure their pulse and count their breaths. We'd recommend practicing this part before starting the activity. The last resource we have is from Sharks for Kids. They have lessons about sharks for all ages. There are activities for students to do and materials for teachers that include PowerPoint slides, teaching guides, and vocab lists. If you're teaching elementary school students, we'd recommend the grade three through four shark senses versus human senses activity. It introduces the five senses and then has short activities to demonstrate what those senses might be like for sharks. It could be a great introduction to this article about sharks sleeping. Don't forget to take a look at our videos at the bottom of the article page when you're planning your class time. There's always a video meant to introduce the topic of the article to your students. In this case, there's a five minute TED Ed talk about the benefits of getting a good night's sleep, especially as it relates to creating and retaining memories. For each adapted article, we also provide an audio version of the article being read for those students who might need some extra help with their reading skills. You can access our audio versions on the web page for each adapted article or on the Science Journal for Kids YouTube channel. That's all for today. If you'd like more teaching tips and ideas for lesson planning, please check out the audio or video versions of our Lesson Ideas podcast. Also, make sure to check out our Ask a Scientist videos for short interviews with some of our researchers. You can find them on our YouTube channel. If you have questions or comments, please share them in the feedback form on our website. You can also sign up for our free monthly newsletter to learn more about our latest content. And as always, 
please visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.